ask the right questions. You know, like there, you, you need to ask the right questions or do your research, you both, right? Like do your research and ask the right questions. And then everything just seems so much more natural because then when you are talking, it's very specific to them. Every, every client is different. Every prospect is different. Even with solar, like we all have different things that are important to us. So if you don't ask the right questions, you don't do your, your research properly, then you're going to be spewing off information that might not matter to people. And that's where you come off annoying you know? So it's all about communication. Do your research, ask the right questions. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 53 of Sales Stories in Real Life. I'm your host, Alex Bruski, and this is the show where professional salespeople share their stories about memorable buying experiences. Today, We've got the one and only LinkedIn trainer voted one of the top 24 B2B marketers, the CEO and founder of Mod Girl Marketing. Welcome to the show, Mandy McEwen. It's a pleasure having you here. I hear you had a really interesting experience when you were buying solar of, of all things. What, what the <laughs> heck happened there? Thanks for having me, Alex. Excited to be here. Yeah, man. Solar is a massive purchase too, right? Like up there. So yeah, it was memorable because it was the biggest purchase I've ever made, right? So that's why it was memorable for multiple reasons. But yes, I can get into it. So circa, uh, let's see, 2020? Before? Yeah, right after the pandemic. Actually, right before the pandemic, 2019. My ex and I in California realized we were spending way too much money with pg and e lovely pg and e who was you know outrageous 500 dollar bills it, it, over the summertime like just ridiculous okay so we're like we've got to look into solar we got to do this so we got some solar companies out had some way over the top sellers that were just annoying you know just like way too into it aggressive etc and we wanted the best so we friend of a friend that we knew who knew the owner sent out his sales rep. She was cool. Awesome. And what really kind of moved the needle for us was the, the reputable nature of the company and how they presented everything. Right. So it didn't seem slimy. It was like real and genuine. And they, they showed us exactly like, okay, we talk about ROI and B2B, right? So here's what you're doing now, what you're paying. Here's what you can expect. And everything was very like modern and professional and their graphs and everything they had. And they were the top of the line. They were the quality purchase, right? So we did our research and we know, you know, who, who is the best, um, super casual. We never felt like we were getting completely sold, not a single time. And I think that's the biggest like lesson here is like all the other Solar people were just your typical like car salesman type, you know, like just over the top. And then these people who were more expensive, quite a bit more expensive than everyone, were just, they're just chill and casual. The owner came out again, super chill, casual. And it was just more of a, look, we're the best, <laughs> we're, the, we're the best option. We know we're more expensive, but you're going to get better installation. You're going to get better warranty. You're going to get, you know these things that these other people can't promise you. But for us, it was more of the comfort level, right? And it was a $50,000 purchase. The, the top, the very, the most expensive bid, we got like four or five bids. It was the most expensive one. And we went with them, you know, solely because of that experience. So let's start from there. I always love these stories where people go with the most expensive vendor, of course, because common knowledge would make people think that people want a good deal, but getting the cheapest is rarely the best deal. So was it like the most expensive vendor and their most expensive option, right? Was there like sort of a base plan that they had you with? And then they sort of mentioned these are the features. So how, how did you get to that sort of top tier price? Yeah, we actually added more solar panels than they told us we needed. <laughs> we were like, we actually want more because what if we want to add a a heater to the pool and what if we want to do this and what if we want to do that and we were so bought in to their products and how awesome it was and their service that we were the ones that were that made the price higher not them do you, <laughs> so, 
So you voluntarily went for a higher yes. price and added to the project size because the, the the buying experience was that good. So let's let let's kind of take it all the way back to the beginning because this was a competitive deal, very mm-hmm. relatable for many of our sellers, right? Mm-hmm. So some of the some of the folks that you said were were coming in kind kind of slimy, right? Or they were like a little mm-hmm. bit over the top, and then these folks came in and. They had a reputable brand. They, you know, did the best presentation. Did you do any research prior, right? Because one of the trends that we see to yeah. in B2B is that people reach out to talk to a salesperson when they're already 70, 80% done with the buying process, right? Was it kind of similar with you where you had researched that brand and you were kind of almost there, but you were just checking the last boxes or how did that go? Well, we knew that they were one of the top brands, but we don't know anything about solar, right? And we're both we're both super busy. So it's not like we spent hours upon hours researching these companies at all. We just knew these were the options in our local area. These people are a national company, but here's their local branch. We see these signs in other people's yards. We did the the social research by talking to people and see who used to stay away from this company. We heard horror stories, right? So I would say we did more community research than we did like online research, to be honest, you know, and just asking around. And then we knew once we met everyone, then we would do our research online. That's kind of how we did it. That's often ways the best way to do it because it's kind of hard to find those horror stories online or you don't know if they're reputable, right? Like when you go to your neighbor and your neighbor says, hey, I worked at this company and they were horrible. Like that's a reputable story. You could see the panels on their roof. You you know your neighbor, right? They're a member of your community. So that's that's really fascinating and, you know, obviously kind of ties it to the dark social theme of modern times where when people need a vendor – they reach out to their connections, right? Say, hey, who do you recommend, right? And then yep. they kind of take pitches from there. So so that's really interesting. So they came out, they they gave you guys the presentation. You actually expanded upon the original project that they gave you. What kind of a time period are we talking about for all this? Like, did this all move pretty quickly? Was this sort of like a, a, a long say, process? It really wasn't that long. I would say we're both, you know, type a go-getters we don't waste time busy right so like we don't drag shit out like we like we get out of business so i would say like maybe a month the whole process of like people talking to people you know and then he came the owner ended up coming out which is really the icing on the cake that's what that's what drove us like we liked the product but it was him being able to come out to our house and just sit down and talk to us because the the price was a concern we we were like man i don't know this is up there like this is $50,000. $50,000. This is a lot. This is a chunk of change. You know, <laughs> this is a lot of money. And so it was like him coming out and talking to us and us being able to ask him the questions, you know, that's kind of what drove us to be like, yeah, let's do this. You know, the fact that he was willing to come out and talk to us. It makes a huge difference because it's not like the original seller, like didn't know how to do their job. Right. It's not like the original person, like didn't give enough uh, of of a quality presentation but like when you bring an executive onto a b2b deal right when you bring a manager onto exactly. a b2b deal when you bring an se onto a b2b deal whoever it is like even if you're doing a good enough job like that just really reinforces the the power of team selling so i love that did any of the other companies bring anybody else out at all? Or was it just like one person at a time? And then this was the only company that brought sort of a, a second person to join along. Yeah, it, no, no one else did. But in, in all fairness, to be uh, transparent here, we had a connection with the right. So like one of our good friends who was our realtor actually knew the owner of the company. And so he you know what I mean? He told him about us and that we were, he didn't have to, he wasn't like, you should go and visit them. You know what I mean? But he knew that we were talking to them and that we had questions and that it would probably help us get over that, you know, purchase sticker shock if he were to come out, you know what I mean? So we didn't actually, act, we weren't like, we need to talk to the owner, right? It was just like an in that we had. And, and Josh was like, Hey, you know, I think if you would go meet with them, it would probably solidify the deal. So that's kind of why. I mean, you're talking a B2B size contract and a B2, in a B2C type of sale. So it, it makes all the sense in the world. And, and mm-hmm. like I said, it just kind of adds that very, that, that, that very personalized touch of like, oh, hey, you know, the owner of the company, right, is coming out. And then like, you know that the service is going to be good, right? And that's actually kind of something that I wanted to ask because obviously with solar, 
you make the purchase and you buy the actual panels, but it's one of those sales where the service is almost just as important as the product, right? These people are on your roof, right? They're doing multiple days of work. They're, you know, screwing in stuff into the foundation of your home. How did the service side of things go? Was it just as... Yeah, so this is the story. This is where the story takes a twist. (laughs) This Uh is good. Okay, so... That is one of the main reasons we went with them is because of, you know, their, their reputable installers, right? So, that know what they're doing. So we heard. So <laughs> they install it. It's fine. So we think the next morning we wake up, make coffee in our lovely brand new expensive coffee maker. And all of a sudden we smell something. And it's the coffee maker, um, like on fire basically. And then we go to the refrigerator and the refrigerator is not working. It's completely off. And then the outlets stop working and we're like, Oh God, what did they do? Because everything was fried. Like before that, the coffee grounder, the grinder was like fine. And then all of a sudden it was like smoking (laughs) and the coffee machine was like, we're like, it's on crack. Like what is happening? It's like, (laughs) like going so fast. Like stuff, we're like, what is happening? The refrigerator doesn't work. We're like, they messed something up when they installed this. Like something, some wiring isn't right. The refrigerator shot, it won't work. So like our food is going bad and we're like, oh my God, story of our lives, right? Because I feel like this shit happens all the time to me and my ex, but it's like, it's always something. Like nothing ever goes smooth, right? Knock on wood, all the wood. But this is just my life. Like I'm used to it. So call them up, call up the owner. We're like, homie something ain't right. Like you need to come out and look at this. <laughs> well, they did not So the way it's a 1970s home in California and the way that it's set up, and I am not an electrician. I don't know anything about this. So I don't know if I'm going to explain this properly, but long story short, the power to the kitchen, they, they, with the solar, they were supposed to not have those meat. Like it, it shouldn't, they shouldn't have connected the solar to the kitchen. And they did. And so what it did was it, oh, it fried everything because the solar is producing so, you know, so much energy and it just zapped everything and the whole kitchen, the whole. And so we were like, oh my God. So they came out, the installers came out and they're like, oh yeah, he didn't do this right. Whoever set this up didn't do it right because the panel was the brand new panel inside there. This was like a multiple day deal was inside the garage. And the new person that came out and looked at it, they're like, oh yeah, look at the panel. They're like, oh yeah, no, this wasn't supposed to be connected here. It, he connected it to your kitchen power and that's what happened. It fried. And and I was livid, right? And I'm fi- like, I'm spicy as it is. You do something to tick me off and like, I'm going to, you're going to hear about it. So I was like, I was like, this is ridiculous. We, this is a brand new refrigerator and a brand new coffee maker. Like you got to take care of it. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to buy us a new refrigerator? And they did. They bought us everything. They bought us everything we needed and a bottle of wine and took us out to dinner. Owner apologized. He owned a restaurant that was connected to the solar place. He felt terrible. So he bought, he replaced everything that we had immediately. And he got us this fancy bottle of wine with like an apology and some chocolates and took us out to dinner personally. What, so, what a way to make up for a horrible situation, right? Like, And he's like, this never happens. This has only happened like one time before in all the years we've, I was like, of course it hasn't. Of, of, of course it would happen to us, you know, but thanks for taking care of it. Like, I appreciate it. But at first I was, ooh, I was a hot. I was like, this is absolutely ridiculous. Cause I'm trying to run a business at the same time. Like now I have, I don't have to deal with this. Like what? But no, he made up for it. So, well, it, it just like, this is not just a sales lesson. This is like a life lesson, right? Like you've got a customer coming in hot, right? A, a friend, whoever it is, right? Like you got someone coming in hot and it's like clearly your fault, right? Like there's no, yeah. there, there's no way around it. Like your worker installed this wrong and you just fall on the sword, right? And just... Mm-hmm apologize right like you said they got you a new fridge they got you a new expensive coffee maker and obviously kitchens have tons of appliances i would imagine it was a good chunk of change to replace all of that stuff they did it right away they took you out to dinner they got you a bottle of wine so it's just like going above and beyond in a moment like that just says so much about someone's character and particularly like how much they care about their customers like 
just even yeah. even if they would have just replaced everything in the kitchen, not taking you out to dinner, not gotten a bottle of wine, it would have been like, okay, mm-hmm. cool. You know, like they reimbursed us, right? But like to take that little extra step above, I, I imagine meant the world. Yeah, no, it did. Thank God, as they should. You know, <laughs> like I am over here, like, yeah, that's what we deserve. So keep sending the wine. Send me a bottle of wine every week for the next year. <laughs> you know what? Send me a pallet while you're at it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh man, but no, oh. they made up for it. That's why it's a really good story. That's why I was like, I have a actually solid story because it's like it's full circle. It's like everything. Like it's great. We're so excited. It's awesome. Your star is awesome. And then it all turns to shit. And we're like, oh God, here we go. But then it's back awesome again. You know, like it was a roller coaster of emotions and experiences here. But at the end of the day, it ended up awesome. And we have like zero bill. Like I don't live there anymore. My ex does though, and the, literally the the bill is like zero dollars you know like it it does what it's supposed to do so you know mission accomplished in that sense accomplished Um, for sure oh man there's a lot there's obviously a lot that we could take out of this for for b2b sellers but obviously we can only retain so much information at one time (laughs) for our b2b sellers that are still listening mandy we appreciate you if you are by the way what would be the one big takeaway that you'd have people take away from this situation, right? Because every good story has like a high, a low, and a resolution. And this mm-hmm. story had all of that. What would be the one <laughs> big takeaway that you'd leave with the with the audience? Honestly, I would just say being human and having empathy. Like that's the whole thing, right? Because like from the get-go, everyone was cool and not slimy and not annoying and they were chill and they acted like human beings and then to follow up with that showing empathy again not you know not reacting to your angry customers you know what i mean so it's just like having empathy and being a good human being and putting the customer first and not worrying about like all the nitty gritty features and benefits and i got to tell you this and i got to do this and and like ditch anything slimy that doesn't feel genuine so it's like and this is what i preach all the time in my linkedin training when i'm training sales teams it's like just be a genuine human being like treat people in per- like you were you would in person like a friend like there's no way there's no need to be slimy salesperson or or weird or awkward or you know shoving features down <laughs> you know when we don't need that like we just need like this is what it's going to do you know, this is what you can expect. And then if stuff does happen, like just be an empathetic, good human being and, and take care of the customer. Like that's like the basics of, of selling, you know? Definitely. And, and uh, I'd be remiss to not ask you since you're training so many teams on this, what would you say to someone who's maybe like struggling, right? And they kind of feel that pressure of like, not necessarily that they need to be slimy because nobody wants to be slimy, but like maybe they're unpurposely being slimy right or maybe they're kind of forcing stuff down people's throats and they just like feel that pressure of whether it's quota or a manager or 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 whatever it is right what kind of advice would you give for those folks to kind of let go of all that and go down the path of just selling like a genuine human ask the right questions you know like there, you you need to ask the right questions or do your research. You both, right? Like do your research and ask the right questions, and then everything just seems so much more natural. Because then when you are talking, it's very specific to them. Every every client is different. Every prospect is different. Even with solar, like we all have different things that are important to us. So if you don't ask the right questions, you don't do your your research properly then you're going to be spewing off information that might not matter to people, and that's where you come off annoying. You know. So it's all about communication. Do your research, ask the right questions. That's the one thing I always say is like, it's the one skill you could never get too good at is like answering good questions because you have no idea what the other person is willing to tell you, excuse me, is willing to share with you. If you're not asking questions in the right way, there's a right and wrong way to ask a question. You could legitimately change zero words, change the tonality, and you get a completely different response. 100%. You could change yep. one word of a question, right? And and, and you get a different response. I'll, I'll give one quick example just because it's so relevant. I remember what I used to call into gatekeepers. I would talk to gatekeepers and say, hey, is John around, right? Or is Mandy around, right? Whoever. And then I changed it to, is Mandy around today? And then I would get stuff like, 
oh, Mandy's traveling, right? And she'll be back next week. Oh. Or, hey, Mandy's in a meeting right now. Her meeting is done at 11, right? Like just those little tiny tweaks, you have no idea how much more information you can get. I love that. That's a perfect example. I'm so glad you brought that up, Alex, because it is all about how you ask it and and the little tiny tweaks that, that you can make, tonality, words, et cetera. So that's a good reminder. I love that. Today, so fascinating. That's that, that's all it takes. And part of that comes with experimenting too, right? It's like yes. doing it hundreds of times, right? And then you realize, yep. hey, when I, when I add this, you know, I noticed that people are a little more open, you know, and then you keep going down that way. And it's like, you have to constantly experiment, but you have to also kind of like find a routine that works for you. So it's almost like you need like a little bit of a, of a ratio, if you will, right? Like kind of like 80% mm -hmm. find your thing, maybe 20%, like experiment with a little tiny, tweak, right? Don't change yes. everything, right? Like little tiny tweaks and then realize like, oh, that direction is getting me more. Let me keep going that direction. Or, Hey, that direction is no good. I'm going to stop going that direction and go another direction. W would you have any sort of stories based on that of like, just experimenting or little tiny question tweaks or anything that sort of comes to mind to you? Yeah, I feel like everything in sales, like a lot of it is experience and experimenting with different things, right? So for example, even like I'm big on video prospecting messaging now, right? And we're starting to get more into that. Like, obviously we're doing, I'm doing that myself for my own business, but also for, you know, training teams on it. So little tiny things like that, instead of just like, sending the video like in the message or email and just like blank like literally like saying like hey you know susan i sent you a quick video you know to follow up on our, our chat last week or if it's some, like adding context and then like even like what do i say in that context and experimenting with that right and so it's like little tiny things like that that i'm always testing out and just like video and audio, you know, and like what people were responding to and what I even say in those and how I start the video. And like, when I do that, like, do I wave like in the, you know, cause they see like the preview, like we use magnify and they, they see the preview of me waving or doing the shaka since I don't know why, like a nerd, you know, it's like little things like that, that I'm like, oh shoot, this works. I, I just got everyone to respond to me within like 24 hours. Sweet. I'm going to start doing more of this, you know? I, this is my life like constantly and so we kind of use me as a guinea pig too with everything linkedin content you know prospecting videos messaging and so i'm i'm the one who's like we're i'm the experiment mandy McEwen is the experiment we're gonna try everything and then we can take it to our clients and be like hey we found this we found this you know so this is my world yeah i i love it i live for this stuff too just trying new things all the time you know if you told me someone is going to put guinea pig and shaka in the same sentence i'd have said no way in hell and and here we are you you did it so you kind of like hit the like yes. little like sales stories in real life scrabble a big bingo card there um That's what i'm here for man <laughs> this has been absolutely fantastic i know that you have a lot you're working on as you mentioned you're doing a lot of video prospecting content on linkedin you're making a lot of content on linkedin in general why don't you plug some with the audience before we jump Yes. So we are all about helping sales teams be badass on LinkedIn in short. So your team and individuals, executives want to grow their presence and not be slimy salespeople, be cool LinkedIn users that people actually want to talk to and get results and drive revenue, real revenue. That's what we do. So everything from training to done for you, executive branding, like I said, video prospecting, we're doing a lot of really, really cool things. And we have a, a new website coming out soon, but that's the gist of it. So teams that are wanting to level up their LinkedIn presence, actually use sales nav, how it's supposed to be used and not just for research purposes. So LinkedIn's a gold mine and the majority of sales teams just are barely scratching the surface. And so our job is to show them how to capitalize on the amazing power of LinkedIn and drive real results. Boom. Obviously not the first time that you've said that. That was like smooth as can be. If you're looking to grow your LinkedIn presence, your team's LinkedIn, LinkedIn presence, Go check out Mandy and Mod, and Mod Girl Marketing. She is amazing, obviously, as you could tell. Mandy, thank you so much for taking the time today to be on the show. I know that you're in Hawaii, and I am extremely jealous of that. So I will throw up a shaka for us, too. Sales <laughs> yes. Stories in Real Life, fam. We will see you next week. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>